to have your your absolute um you know your your number one star um out of action for a quarter of the year is 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 definitely a challenge robert lovely to see you um a very uh, interesting time for your book to come out um presumably you didn't know that the king had any kind of significant health issue no i had no idea at all about um the, the, that he was um heading for hospital or indeed that um the princess of wales was was already in hospital no and the fact that the king has chosen, uh, presumably he's chosen, to be completely transparent about what his issue is, is that significant? It feels like a change. It does. I, uh, it, it definitely feels like a, a, a gentle shift of, of, of tone, really. Of um, you know, Clearly, anyone's private medical details remain private. I mean, yes, we have a right to know if a monarch is ill, but we don't have the right to know everything. But I, I, I just thought that you know the words "enlarged pr- prostate" in a in a palace statement. I mean, that's that's quite something. You know, that's and that's, it's partly I think a case of sort of moving with the times. But I think it's also partly a kind of case of leading by example. It's, it's and we've sort of slightly seen that you get occasionally get sports personalities talking about if they have particular you know whether it's testicular cancer or whatever or, or, or other celebrities talking about. Um, uh, bravely talking about things that must be extremely painful to talk about, but with a with a view to spreading the word, and I I think there's an element of that here as well with with him getting it out there. Certainly, that's what we're being told is he 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 didn't want to kind of hold back because you know maybe other people might now get checked out. If it can happen to a king, it can happen to you, and so on. Yeah, um, we know he's not his mother, but this is a very good example of how he isn't his mother. Yes, I mean it's it's a change. Like I say it's a change of gear, um, and I I noticed that while I was you know doing my book um, that just things are they haven't changed dramatically. I mean monarchy is not a it's not a brand of toothpaste. It doesn't have a sort of image relaunch under under new ownership, but it it it, it, it actually it, it sort of stands for continuity. But each each monarch, each reign, you know, you do it differently. You do it in your own way, and it, it's definitely it's one of those things. I'm sure. Um, you know, when, when when the next person writing a book about him comes along, they, they will point to this moment and say that was that was interesting because there was, a, I think, a much greater degree of uh, of of mind your own business in 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 when it came to royal medical bulletins in the past. In fact, I was looking back at one uh, when I was remember in the middle of the um, Diamond Jubilee in 2012. There was a sort of slightly awful moment um, in the right in the middle of the commemorations between the. The river pageant and the service at St Paul's, I think it was, that, that, that the Duke of Edinburgh was suddenly taken into hospital. And we were told at the time it's a you know, minor infection, but we didn't get any, any the, anything like this sort of level of detail. Can we just talk about the Princess of Wales, whose, whose illness uh, we don't know? And we, I mean, I'm absolutely not going to use this mm, as an opportunity to ask you if you, uh, well, we've answered the question. <laughs> uh, but no 42 year old woman who's previously been extremely healthy stays in hospital for quite a chunk of time, up to two weeks, we're told, unless it's pretty serious. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a, in any way a, a medical expert. I mean, it's clearly, it is. Uh, it, it, it is serious because, you know, as you say, it's a, it's a, lo- a long stint. Um, but, uh, you know, we, 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 we've had various reassurances from the various sort of bulletins that it's, you know, it's not this, it's not that. I mean, I think it's just a case of just make sure she's absolutely absolutely fine and fighting fit when she comes out. She's very popular. And do you think that if somebody did find out why she went into hospital and what the surgery is and chose to make that public, there would be a huge backlash against that. Would anybody really be able to publish that if they did know? Well, I suppose we, we, we live in an age of ever more intrusive or, or, or just inventive social media and I, I suspect something like that wouldn't necessarily... Um, stay secret for long but i i can't imagine any responsible outlet publishing it publicizing it i mean there are very strict rules guarding you know, medical details and let's not forget i mean there was that incident some years ago when she was in hospital with uh with very severe morning sickness um i think it was um it I was remember, i don't yeah. remember the medical details but i certainly remember the incident when you had two australian uh radio presenters ringing up the hospital pretending 
uh, to be royal and getting through and, and a, a, some of this poor nurse, you know, late at night, you know, um, answered the phone, put the put them through. I, I, I can't remember the exact details, but it was it was it was a great it was a breach of trust in a hospital situation and the nurse was so mortified that she killed herself i mean that was absolutely devastating for everybody i think the radio presenters uh, i, I, I won't name them. I can't remember their names. I know one of them lost their job. I think a career was over. I mean, the whole thing, everything about it was just so ghastly um, that I think it was a reminder that, you know, royal health is just no moment for taking liberties, let alone levity. Kate's absence, I mean, Fia's absolutely right. Kate is popular. She is the family's stardust, isn't she, actually, at the moment. And the fact that she won't be on the public stage for, well, a couple of months perhaps longer, it does expose the slightly threadbare nature of the working royal unit at the moment. Well, yeah, we, we heard a lot, and we have heard a lot in recent years, about you know the slim-down monarchy. Everyone kept talking about how, you know, will Charles slim down the monarchy? Well, I mean, it, it was slimming itself um, quite readily um, up to, um, well, first, obviously, the death of the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen. Um, and... Yeah, it's 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 a pretty um, reduced working unit at the best of times, and and but I, I, over the years it, it just it adapts, it evolves. I mean, it, it, you know, they they just they they get on with it. You can't rustle up extra royals when you need them. You have to have to make do, and and it will be it will certainly be a a, a loss because you know the 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 Waleses had a had a spring program, quite a busy spring program of events. I think you know as an institution it'll cope. Perfectly well until there's one of the, the sort of the, the, those big items, those big moments that happen in the calendar. Um, and if if we were looking at a uh, the, you know, big, say the, the that big week in June where you have uh, the, the the birthday parade, everybody on parade for the, the for trooping the colour, followed by the Knights of the Garter all gathering at Windsor, followed by Royal Ascot, followed by garden parties galore, Holyrood House, all that sort of stuff where people really expect to get their kind of royal fix in the summer. I mean, that then then it would be felt, I think, a lot more sorely. Whereas January, um, yeah, it's it's it, it's 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 an issue. But I mean, yes, you're right. I mean, to to be to have your your absolute, um, you know, your your number one star um, out of action for a quarter of the year is 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 definitely a challenge. Well, wouldn't this be the time over there in the USA? <laughs> For Harry to pick up the phone. Uh, I mean, is there any hope that that could happen? I, I think the, the, the idea of a sort of um, an emergency enforced um, deem exit strategy, I, I, I can't see it. I really can't. I mean, blood's thicker than water, Robert. Blood's thicker than water. It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. It is. But, but uh, you know, it, it, if you Harry and Meghan have taken a very clear decision to sort of step back from royal life um, and to go back into royal life to sort of as it were, hold the fort. Uh, I, it, it just, you know, it, w it wouldn't happen. It would. Uh, why? Why would they do it? Why would the palace want it? Um, I, I think it's a case that we, they just have to get on with with the, the cards they've been dealt. What do you know about the current state of their relationship? Well, the the. King uh, always, you know, he, he, his view is, you know, open door. You know, let's keep the door open and let's see what happens. There isn't a, there isn't a sort of great standoff. Um, but um, I think that the, the relationship is probably a harder one to fix is, is between the brothers. Um, I think, um, you know, you had the, 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 the two things that are really um, driven the, the, this sort of schism. One was the April Winfrey interview, which was absolutely extraordinary probably the most i would say seismic but a royal um broadcasting since um diana's panorama interview in 1995 and there was that and then there was the publication of his book spare there was there was that sort of six-part netflix documentary but that was um to put it in a californian way so curated um that it, 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 it good was accent sort of, there uh, robert yeah, yeah. Well, i try sorry don't, don't get me doing australian um but um <laughs> like uh, but you know it was uh spare was that was uh, it was a little less damaging to the institution but it was it was really that that capacity to just chuck precious intimate childhood conversations often perfectly nice ones i mean actually you, you read spare Everybody comes out of it pretty much okay. Um, you know, even you, you go into it thinking, you know, 
Camilla Parker Bowles, later Duchess of Cornwall, is going to be depicted as sort of Cruella de Vil, and actually, she, she, even she, you know, is is, is treated sympathetically, and uh, and and Charles comes out of it um, as a, a sort of endearing, slightly eccentric dad, and there's clearly a deep rooted bond love with 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 William, but for all that. Just in putting so much of that out there, putting these sort of childhood stories and and and, and feuds and and all the rest of it uh, so publicly, um, was just so wounding for someone as um, rigorously private as as the Prince of Wales, Prince William, who really does guard his his privacy. I mean, they all do, but I think he in particular. I think I think to have all that suddenly thrown out in the open was just such an extraordinary act of 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 unthinking if you're going to be charitable of, of just stupidity but you know or, or else just malevolence that I think that will take a long time to, to, to recover so do you have to run past Charles and anybody else that you know in the royal family the details that you've revealed in your book no no I haven't no I, I mean I it's a not an authorized biography I mean yeah some people you interview ask, you know, can you, can you, can we check our quotes at the end? I mean, that's that sort of standard practice. Um, not actually with, um, with, 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 with royals. Um, come to think of it, but, um, but it can be with, with some people, and that's, you know, that's goes with any, any sort of book. But no, there's been no, um, no authorized, no, no censorship, no editorial control. I'm, I'm a. A free agent, and I'm sure there are bits in the book that they'd much rather weren't there. Well, it's all thriller, no filler, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you you do hint, and it feels like the wrong time to be unpleasant about uh, the Prince of Wales because he's clearly got a lot on his plate at the moment. But that you hint that he's a somewhat less substantial figure than than his father. That he, uh, he doesn't read, for example. That he's, <laughs> he's not he's not he's not religious. Well, most of us aren't religious, uh, but that presents a challenge if you are going to be the head of of a church, possibly uh, when you assume. <laughs> which, yes, which yeah. I, I, I'm sure he will be. By the way, um, uh, I mean, in, in the in the book, it's very clear that he, he he's not he's not interested in in, in religion particularly. I it's one, as I say, I mean, someone very close to him said he's not instinctively comfortable in a faith environment. He goes to church, like most people. Um, you know, high days, holidays, um, Easter and Christmas, weddings. He will actually have to start going to church a bit more than he likes because as Prince of Wales, as a kind of heir, you tend to become, you become the sort of chief national mourner. Um, monarchs don't, as a, on, the, on the whole, go to other people's state funerals. Um, so whenever there's going to be, and, and there's just a constant churn, but as, as is the nature of life, there's always an important, Funeral, state funeral, president, retired president, whatever going on somewhere in the world. Britain needs to be properly represented, so you send the Prince of Wales. So he's got a lot of that coming up. But going back to your point, he, um, he's just he's 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 a different character. He's a he's a he's a regular guy. I think as someone said in the in the in whom I interviewed, and that that's I think that's the difference. I mean, it's not that he doesn't read. He does he doesn't have that sort of appetite or that that kind of questing. Uh, intellectual uh, instinct that, that I think the, the, the king does. You know, I don't think you'll have him lying awake at night wondering about the meaning of life or wanting to go on sort of uh, pilgrimages or solaces or retreats to Greek monasteries. It's just not his thing, you know. He's, and, and as, as, as I think, uh, again, as I say in the book, you know, he, I compare him, or he's was compared to me, as he's, he's rather like George VI, you know, who was another sort of, you know, dependable regular guy but you know boy when you're in a crisis when when it comes to duty absolutely it's exactly what you need he's just different uh, you do say i think i've made a note of it that charles at one point was employing 10 gardeners mm -hmm. at highgrove his home in gloucestershire mm. why because he, he loves gardening i think was, it was a point being made by someone who i was saying well you know isn't he quite extravagant um, uh, because we always have that image of, of the Queen with her sort of Tupperware boxes and going around the house turning out the lights. And someone made the point that actually the cost of all the racehorses and all the racing stuff was considerably more than 10 gardeners. Um, but yes, he, he, I mean, the garden at Highgrove is a great, great labour of love. And it's, it's I mean, it's a, it's a sort of, it's got a farm attached, a home farm. It's got, um, I mean, I walk around it with him actually. And it, 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 it's, it's very much bits of it have, very sort of tidy and ornate bits of it are 
the sort of wildflower meadows. There's, I mean, it's quite something, but yeah, it it it's, it takes quite a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, we know that uh, they're a royal family, so they live in a very different way from the rest of us. But you, you've got Highgrove. He's also got the use of five houses in Scotland mm -hmm. and Buckingham Palace, <coughs> Windsor Castle, <coughs> Sandringham, Clarence House <coughs> and Highgrove. Camilla has her own home. He's got a farm in Transylvania and a farm in Wales. In Wales, yeah. Is that all right? It's uh, They're very conscious. Um, I know that within the palace people were expecting this to become a much bigger deal than it's become. I mean, particularly at a time of sort of cost of living crisis, the idea you've got a head of state who's got, I think, 11. I, try, I was sort of trying to tot it up. It slightly depends whether you count the Transylvanian operation as two farmhouses or one. And um, in Wales, it's sort of... The, the rental is in two. I mean, you could, if you really wanted to boil it down, you could say he's got 14 houses. Um, but, I mean, the, 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 the point is actually most of them, they're not residences. I mean, the, the, the property in Wales is there to sort of promote Welsh craft and Welsh Welshness, and it's there, it's, that, it's, it's up there for, for, for rent. It's a sort of... Um, but he stays in it every now and then to give it that sort of royal imprimatur to, to show that he's... Uh, interested in it, and the the, the the house in Transylvania. I mean, anybody can can rent that. I mean, he probably spends one two nights a year. The rest of the time, it's for sale. Actually, um, some some in laws of mine uh, once once rented it oh, for a weekend. They? they didn't even know it was his. They were renting. They needed someone nearby, and they ended up there. Um, but but nonetheless, yes, it's it's uh, he's got more homes than his late mother because he's inherited all hers, and he's still got his. So, you know, Highgrove, Clarence House, on top of, and the, the Castle of Maine, Dumfries House in Scotland, on top of all of the other ones, that's, that's a lot of residences. So that's, that's, got to, that's got to change. And I think what we're going to see in the year ahead is an awful lot of, of tidying up to do on all these things. I mean, not just what do you do with a lot of these properties. Um, you've got the whole issue of all the patronages, hundreds of them. I and mean, they all went back into the mix after the death of the Queen and they've all got to be sort of reallocated. Um, and, and the events of the last few days, a sort of reminder, well, what do you do if, you know, you're, I mean, the Princess of Wales, for example, you know, she's the colonel of the um, Irish Guards now. That, that, that's, you know, what's going to happen on St. Patrick's Day when the colonel of the Irish Guards normally goes and presents shamrocks. I mean, all these things have to be thought through. And then on top of that, you've got the whole issue of the um, royal warrants, which matter enormously to hundreds of businesses all over the country for them having that badge of badge of honour. They last for two years after the um, death of a what they call a grand tour. So um, all the Queen's royal warrants, they all expire in September. The Duke of Edinburgh's were already gone. What happens to all, you know, how do we keep that sort of essential bit of, if you like, promoting British excellence? All that's got to be sorted out. Um, and and the and, and wither the residences is is part of that and and certainly what I, what I go into in the book and it's it's, it's obviously the slightly less sensational part of the book talking about uh, slinky heat pumps and double glazing at the palace but I mean it's 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 all part of what's going on um, you know the, the the Buckingham Palace is in the middle of a ten year refurbishment um, and once that's over I mean obviously you couldn't begin to start. Um, opening it up in any significant way now. But once that's over, we are going to see more public use of that. I think we will see um, Balmoral, for example, being opened up more and more. And, and you know, a lot of those other places, like the Castle of May, it, he stays there a few days a year. Um, but it's a charitable trust. And actually, he's, someone put it to me that he's a great believer in the living tradition. People are much more interested in looking around houses that, that are lived in from time mm. to time. Mm. Uh, and I went, did go up to Dumfries' house a, a couple of years ago to, to um, interview him. And I sort of spent a weekend. Um, there, there's a sort of guest house there. Um, and that's that estate was completely under lock and key before he bought it. Nobody was allowed in. There was a sort of gamekeeper who wandered around with a gun and saying, get off my land. Uh, and the dowager marchioness of Butte used to sit in the house on her own with her dogs, uh, dogs on the amazing Chippendale furniture, and she just sat in an old armchair, and she liked watching the racing, and that's how it was for years, and nobody went there, and suddenly he ended up buying it, opening it up, and all the people go there. So, well, we'd never, we'd never seen it before. We'd never been in, and now it's, it's, it's just like public thoroughfare. People go in, there's playgrounds. You can go in whenever you like. It's free. Mm. Um, so there's all that kind of stuff. But 
you know, on paper, it's another residence. Yes, it's one, I mean, and, I, you and, put and, up a spirited defence of the number but, of properties. But, but also, I, I also I can see it's 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 also it's a big um, you know PR challenge. You know, what are you what are you going to do about all these properties? How do you how do you on the one hand give them um, life by using them from time to time, but on the other um, whether the accusations that you're living in a complete ivory tower because you've got all these houses and people always say, well, there's a homeless crisis. Why aren't we putting, um, you know, more people in, in? You know, you could think how many people you could you could accommodate in in all these places. So it's it's a juggling act, and I think the answer will be that you know quite a few will 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 effectively become rather like Hampton Court palaces now or the Tower of London. I mean, they're technically royal premises. They come under the orbit of something called historic royal palaces. Um, or you've got something like Kensington Palace, where sort of half it's public, it's sort of like a museum, but half of it is actually lived in by by royalty. And I think that the, there will have to be a sort of a, a, a clarity there. Particularly, you've got a slim down monarchy, and yet uh, ostensibly this vast property portfolio. That they, those two can't go together, but they they don't need to be told that. I mean, that's 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 in hand. I'm just uh, I'm just surprised it hasn't become a bigger thing already. Yeah, well, I suppose it was quite. You made it quite a big thing for me, actually, Rob. <laughs> when I was reading the book, just very, very quickly. Do, uh, do you fear for the future of the of the institution, bearing in mind that monarchies tend to do better? The sweeping generalisation <laughs> alert uh, under <laughs> under female monarchs. Yeah, and you know we've had the late Queen. It, for all of us, I think is the Queen. Yeah, uh, and she's, she's even got her own dictionary entry in German. Actually, there's um, for years in the German dictionary. Um, uh, Duden, um, it was, you know, Kernigan is the word for queen, but the new edition, it, it has it says de queen, um, yeah. and then it says there is no plural. There's right. just one, the mm. queen. But we won't <coughs> have one. We won't have one for a very long time. Mm, I know. And isn't that a bit of an issue? I wouldn't say it's an issue. I mean, I think it's a source of... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm no disrespect to William and George, you know, um, uh, they are, it, it goes with the territory of a hereditary monarchy, you know, it, it, is, it's, it is, goes back to, you know, the, the, the cards you're dealt. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, queens through the 40 monarchs we've had um, since the Norman Conquest, I mean, queens have been so much more impressive than the kings and they're a tiny number. I mean, whatever it is, six. Um, someone will probably ring in and, and correct me, and we can have a debate about Lady Jane Grey later. But okay. I mean, you know, it's 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 a small fraction, um, many many more kings. But you ask anybody, name your best top five monarchs in history, and they are absolutely going to put in the mix Elizabeth I, Victoria, and Elizabeth II. Mm. And then you could argue about the other two. Let's kings. not mention Bloody Mary. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, some might put her in. Um, but, but I mean, the point is, uh, yeah, queens are are of a. I mean, are, are the track record is 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 super impressive. And it was one, that was one of the arguments when there was this recurring debate, as there was really the through since probably the eighties onwards. You'd see quite a lot of private members' bills, a growing pressure to change the laws of succession, saying, you know, this is ridiculous queens do better than kings why why do we give men a head start and that was one of the reasons for changing the rules which happened on 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 the, the late queen's watch finally with the succession to the crown act um but um yeah we we we, we are not going to see a queen regnant um in our lifetimes mm. that's for sure um, Jane intends to live forever, so oh, well, it could happen in hers. Yes. I don't uh, want to be queen myself. I think secretly <laughs> you do. <laughs> Can I just ask you, uh, when you spend time with King Charles, is he companionable? Uh, do you feel that you're in the presence of your monarch? What's he actually like as a chap? He's, uh, yes, he's, he's, he's a very kind of um, genial host. I mean, when I'm there, I'm not there as a sort of, as a charm. I mean, I'm not there as an authorised biographer. I mean, he did do an authorised biography, a very good one. Jonathan Dimbleby did it with him um, and, and a film back in the, in the 90s. And, and so I had a, it was a completely different order of access. I'm not an authorised book. Um, I was writing a, a documentary that's obviously sort of following him around, but you know, very much sort of, you know, tradesman's entrance, not not sitting down at the, 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 the dinner table. Um, but he's always, and, and Queen Camilla as well, they're always very, um, you know, they're, they're, they're very friendly. Um, they're not over-friendly. Uh, you, you're there to do a job. Um, you're, you're, you know, observing. Um, but yes, in sort of, you know, 
private moments maybe you you, you sort of have a chat about things um, nothing you know radical or substantial but I mean I just remember on 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 the old um, I went on a, I was on the state visit with them to to, to, to Germany um, back in the spring and you know at the end of that they sort of came back down the plane to have a chat with us all and you know talk about how it went um, and yeah they're, they're, he he's he has extremely, I think he has extremely good manners. I sort of notice that around people, even after people have sort of seen him, even people who are not, people who are quite notably anti-monarchist, um, you know, they sort of come away. He's, he's very charming. Um, he's, uh, yeah, we all know he's, you know, he does have a, a temper. We saw that with his with his, with pen. his pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, there are enough sort of anecdotes about that sort of thing over the years. But um, he's, he's, He's very happy now. That's the thing I noticed. I mean, I, I, I sort of on and off been writing about royalty for, I don't know, since the 90s. And so I've seen him in action quite a bit over the years, in the sort of darker years, um, through the sort of noughties and, and up to the present. And, and I would say he is, he's more contented now than, than certainly than I've, I've seen him before. And I think that, that just... That, people often said that about the Queen as well, that in, when she got to later stages of life... You look back in the 60s, 70s, even in the 80s, people always comment on how glum she looked. She didn't smile very much. And then she she got to the sort of noughties. And it was around about the time <clears throat> that she'd actually lost her mother and her sister. And so, you know, a period of great sadness. But I think also there was a sort of release. And, 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 a, and, and as someone put it to me, a serenity. Um, when she, you know, finally hit what everybody could agree was old age. It was like, well, I've done what I can do. I, I can't really do any more. I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to enjoy it. Um, and and she was a very smiley queen in in her later years. And I I noticed with him, he's he's a he's a happy monarch. <laughs>